Aside from antigen A and antigen B, which can both be found on the membrane of red blood cells and which actually determine the type of blood group that the individual has, another group of antigens that can also be found on the membrane of red blood cells is a group we call the Rh factor. Now, by far the most common type of antigen within the Rh factor group of the human body is known as antigen D. In fact, about 85% of the individuals living in the United States that came from Western Europe have a gene on their DNA that codes for the antigen D protein. So an individual with the gene on their DNA that codes for antigen D is known as an RH positive individual. And what this means is an RH positive individual will have the gene to create the antigen D protein. And so their red, white blood, their red blood cells will contain that antigen D. On the other hand, an individual that is said to be RH negative does not have the gene on their DNA and so will not code and create that protein and will not have antigen D on the membrane of their red blood cells. So in this particular diagram, we're describing a person that is blood type A and which is RH negative. Now, unlike the ABO blood group, an RH negative individual will not normally produce the antibody against antigen D. However, if they are actually ever exposed to that antigen D, only then will their immune system begin producing the antibody against antigen D. And to see what we mean, let's once again look at the following diagram. Let's suppose we have an RH negative individual, that is, that has the blood group A blood type A. What that means is they will have antigen A on their membrane and will not have antigen B. And it also means that because they don't have antigen B, their immune system will readily produce antibodies against antigen B and those antibodies will circulate in the blood. Now, what it means for the individual to be RH negative is the following. They don't have that antigen D on their membrane, but their immune system will not necessarily produce the antibody against antigen D. The immune system will only begin producing that antibody against antigen D if they are actually exposed to that antigen D and we'll see an example of this in just a moment when we discuss the process of pregnancy and childbirth. So now it turns out that the gene that codes for the RH factor, the protein antigen D is actually dominant to the recessive trait, to the gene that does not code for it. So to see what we mean by that, let's suppose we have a father that is heterozygous for that trait. So we have a dominant uppercase R and a recessive lowercase r. And let's suppose the father mates with a mother, a female, that is also heterozygous for that same trait. So uppercase R, lowercase r. So we have the father, and the mother and they have an offspring a child now what this describes is the probability of the child be the, uh, being rh positive or rh negative so because the gene is dominant to the recessive trait that means uppercase r and uppercase r will be rh positive and so will uppercase r and lowercase r because uppercase r is dominant over over lowercase r. So we have one, two, three out of four will be our RH positive. And so 75% will be RH positive, and there's a 25% chance that it will be RH negative. So we get RH negative only if we have lowercase r, lowercase r. Now, instead of mating a father who is uppercase R, lowercase R, and a mother who is uppercase R and lowercase R, let's suppose a woman 
who is RH negative, so lowercase r, lowercase r, decides to have a child with a man, with a male, who is RH positive. Now, we know there are two different types of RH positives. We have uppercase r, uppercase r, which is homozygous dominant. And we have the heterozygous as shown. So let's suppose we have a man who is heterozygous and a female who is homozygous recessive. And we have a female who is homozygous recessive and a male who is homozygous dominant. In both cases, when these individuals mate to produce a child and offspring, there is a probability that the offspring will be RH positive. In this case, there is a 50% chance of the child being uh, uh, um, RH positive. So we have 1, 2, 50% and 50% of the child being RH negative. But in this case, it's 100% likelihood that the child will be RH positive. So let's assume for the time being that the fetus that is produced is actually RH positive and that means that inside the fetus, inside the blood of the fetus, the fetus will have red blood cells that contain the antigen D on the membrane of those red blood cells. The question is how will this actually affect that pregnancy and how will it affect any future pregnancy that the woman may have? So to answer this question, let's begin with the following diagram. So this is our fetus. This is the placenta that connects the bloodstream of the fetus to the bloodstream of our female of the mother. And this is the blood vessel of our mother. Now, normally, be, uh, normally because the red blood cells are too large, they cannot pass across the placental membrane. But during pregnancy, during childbirth, that is, there is a small likelihood that there can be exchange of red blood cells. There is a leakage of red blood cells and some of the red blood cells can be exchanged between the fetus and our woman. Now, we know that because the woman is RH negative, that means within the bloodstream, the woman will not have any antibodies against antigen D because that woman was never exposed to antigen D before that and so she is RH negative. But because the child, the fetus, is RH positive, that inside their blood, they do have red blood cells that contain antigen D. And when during childbirth, some of these red, uh, red blood cells of the fetus leak into the blood system of the mother, some of these antigen D red blood cells end up in the mother's bloodstream. And now, because the mother is exposed to antigen D for the first time, the immune system will kick in and begin producing antibodies against the antigen D found on those red blood cells that essentially leak into the mother from the fetus. Now, this will not actually affect this fetus in any way because this process takes place during and after childbirth, but it will affect any further pregnancies that the mother can actually have, especially if that next child is also RH positive. So once again, during the first pregnancy, some of the red blood cells of the fetus that have antigen D RH factor can leak into the mother's blood. Now this leakage of red blood cells that contain antigen D into the mother's bloodstream, that is, who is RH negative, will cause the immune system of the mother to begin producing antigen D antibodies. However, since the fetal red blood cells usually leak during childbirth, this will not affect that fetus. But let's suppose the same woman who has been exposed to these antigen D proteins and now contains those antibodies against antigen D, let's suppose she once again becomes pregnant with a fetus who is once again RH positive. What will happen now?
Well, now we're going to have something called RH incompatibility. And what that means is because these antibodies that were produced as a result of that first pregnancy are floating around in the bloodstream of the mother, and because they're small enough, they can pass across the fetal membrane into the bloodstream of that fetus. Now, how is this a problem? Well, the fetus is assumed to be RH positive, and that means it contains red blood cells that contain the antigen D. Now, when these antibodies travel through the membrane of the placenta and into the bloodstream of the fetus, they will bind onto the antigen D proteins of the red blood cells of the fetus. And once bound, they will destroy, they will lyse the cell. And when the cell breaks, when it lyses, it releases dangerous chemicals into the bloodstream of that fetus, and that can ultimately damage the organs of that fetus, including the brain and other organs. So we can see how as a result of our immune system trying to protect our body, it can actually damage that fetus during the process of pregnancy second time around. So once again, to conclude, antigen A and antigen B, the antigens that determine our blood group, are not the only antigens that can be found on the membrane of red blood cells. Another type of antigen is antigen D, and this is part of a group of antigens found in humans known as the RH factor.